Hello, and welcome to Talking Business with Beverly. I am your host and business strategist, Beverly Wathauer. Thank you for joining us as we support you, the entrepreneur, in getting the clarity needed to create time and financial freedom in your business. And so we do this by not only addressing your business needs, but also your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial needs as well. Now join me in welcoming Erica F. Brooks to the show. Hello, Erica, how are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. And so you guys, I brought Erica on to talk with us about her entrepreneurial journey. I think as entrepreneurs, it's very important to have this conversation <laughs> so that people see what it looks like because sometimes we see us on the on the finished end of it mm -hmm. and they, we don't get to see the process that it took to get us there mm -hmm. but erica before we get started i love to play this game with my guests where mm -hmm. i ask them three random questions mm -hmm. so erica are you game to play the game i am all game. awesome okay erica um what is one movie that you can watch over and over and over again Pursuit of happiness. Oh, I love it. I love it. And are you a morning person or a night person? Morning. Sure. Oh, so I can call you at four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning. Mm, well, I won't be calling you at four o'clock in the morning because I'll still be asleep, but I just know that I can yes. call you at four o'clock in the morning. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, what's the last book that you read? Um, it is called Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness oh, by Jim Rohn. I love that. I love that. And so, Erica, let's go ahead and dive into this conversation. So we're going to get in your business just a little bit. OK. okay. And so, you know, tell us what is it that you do? Um, I do um, financial services and I help people build wealth through multiple vehicles. Um, and that's through financial services, entrepreneurship and monetizing their gift. And so for you, how did you get started in that realm when it comes to what you do um, as far as this wealth building? How did you get started? Basically, first job out of high school was in banking. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot about credit, learned a lot about um, shifting into mortgage and really just learned that um, where the gaps were that financial services may not tell people. Mm -hmm. And started researching and started teaching and learned that it was a gift, a spiritual gift. And so it was, I was jolted in the business even when I really didn't know what business was. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did that happen? Like, how did you kind of get shifted into it? Um, it was being in financial services and just seeing the, um, just being transactional, seeing mm -hmm. how banking and institutions are very transactional and very relational. Mm -hmm. And so with that relationship, wanting to begin to educate people. And so I started doing financial boot camps and educating people on different things. And then I realized teaching was my spiritual gift. Yes. And then so it was more like, this is just my passion. This is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And when I realized I was good at it, I was a sole proprietor for years and then um, made it a formal business. I love that. And so for you, you know, what were some of those challenges, though, that you experienced kind of transitioning from, you know, working for someone else to now also having your own business? Um, one of the biggest challenges is because I'm a giver was charging for services because I started off doing things pro bono mm -hmm. because you're passionate giving, but realizing that. Your gift will not only make room for mm -hmm. you in 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 the the faith based arena, mm -hmm. but it can also make room for your household economics. And so I had to learn my value in being able to charge for services because I was putting in a lot of time. Uh, one of the challenges was that I started off as the pro bono chick, and so sometimes you can be um, viewed, you know, in that way. And then I didn't have mentors. Mm -hmm. I really had to seek them out. Um, initially, there were people that that are in my life that didn't willingly volunteer information. So I just learned that if I wanted something, I had to invest in it mm -hmm. and begin to invest in further knowledge to not just do things, but to do it the right way. There we go. And so you said a, a mouthful right there, Erica, and I kind of want to <laughs> dig and peel the layers back a little bit with what you said. So how? because I know there's a lot of people out there and they're like, well, how do I shift from offering my services for free, the pro bono stuff to actually say, no, you know, here's the price on it. Like, how did you make that shift? I think it's, it's, it's going to sound really um, simple. Just do it. Mm. <laughs> um, I'll give an example. I used to do financial boot camps and I would pay for lunch, printed materials, et cetera. And I may have a free facility such as the library, but I've spent so much money on, on food and things. And I would have 40 people register and 15 people show up. However, the first financial boot camp that I charged for, and even though I had a very slow rate, it was like $30, it was 60 people. 
maybe about 62 people. And literally the, the library had to really pull more chairs in. So I just wanted to do that test. What I just mm -hmm. really wanted to cover the cost of lunch and the cost of materials. And so when I just did it, I noticed that sometimes when people don't invest, there's no commitment. They don't show up. And so it's really, and another thing, sometimes when you really know that when you're, you're, you're a giver and you know how much you're putting in it, you know that you're even giving more than the value that price tag. Mm -hmm. And so it is really, it's not about me just making the money. It's about that person investing in themselves because we invest in what it is that we value. That is powerful. And you, you keep using the word value and I hear, you know, the name of the company is I Know My Value. Where did that title come from for the business? And is that why you talk so much about that even within what you do? It's really biblical. I know my value because Jesus paid the price. <laughs> and when I think about it, you know, if Jesus died for us, the, the ultimate sacrifice, even in my logo, there's a there's a ruby because mm -hmm. rubies are more valuable than diamonds. And there's a, there's a silhouette of a cross and so when I when you begin to know whose you are, then you know who you are. And so now that I know whose I am and I begin to know who I am, I'm no longer um, manipulated in business. I'm no longer guilted into doing things. Um, I, I, I don't feel bad about having a price tag because I know that I'm continuously sowing seeds and I understand that there's this, this is the harvest. Wow. Wow. Look, at she really broke it down. And we're going to have Erica break it down even further right after these messages. Hello, my name is Beverly Wathauer and I am a business strategist. And so today I just want to talk to you about four simple tips that you can implement when it comes to creating more income and more impact in your business. And so this is specifically for those of you that leverage social media in the online space. And so I call these my four C's. And so the very first C that we have is all about the content that you put out. So whether or not that content is on social media, whether or not it's messages that you sent to your email list, your blog, any conversations that you're having with people. So that's anything in which you're speaking to your ideal client. You want to ensure that it is valuable content. It is information in which people are able to make some type of shift or they're able to learn something about you or learn something about themselves. So having that quality content is very important. Next, you also want to ensure that you are making quality connections. And so when it comes to connections, this is really and truly you building relationships relationships with your ideal client. And once again, on social media, for instance, the way that that can look. So whether or not it's you, um, you know, maybe commenting on someone's content that they put out there, whether or not it's you sparking up a conversation with them, you know, those are things where you're actually connecting with people. And so from that connection that you make, um, what you want to do is then shift into conversations. And so with those conversations, you are gearing that specifically to find out one of three things. You're uh, having those conversations to see whether or not that person might be a potential client, whether or not they might be a potential collaboration. So you and that person may be, be able to get together and actually do something together, or it might be a potential connection, which just means that, you know, your services or product may not be a good fit for them, but you know of someone one that you can actually connect them with in which their services are a better fit. And so as you are having those conversations with them, those people in which they are a potential client, then what you want to do is to convert them into a uh, potential, you know, actually do a conversion. So that means actually converting them into a paying client. So they're going from a potential client into a paying client. And so that conversion can take place via social media in Messenger. So you hear people say it goes down down in the DMs. So actually being able to close uh, clients and uh, close clients in Messenger, or it may actually take you sending them a link and they go to that link to make the purchase. Or it could be where you actually get on a sales call with them, have a conversation with them where you're digging into more of what it is that they need, what their problems are, what it is that they actually desire. And then if you have that solution, actually offering that solution to them. And so actually making the offer. And then that is when they become that paying client. So once again, this was just a quick tip to help you to be able to create more income and more impact in your business. Until next time.
Hello, and welcome back to Talking Business with Beverly. And so before the break, we were speaking with Erica just about her process and her journey um, in entrepreneurship. And so Erica, you mentioned, you know, about you sowing seed and kind of knowing and understanding what it is that you bring to the table. So, you know, kind of making those mindset shifts. So talk to us, what does a typical day, put that in quotation marks, look like for you as an entrepreneur? Yeah. I wake up between 4.45 and 5 to 15, morning person. And it's really starting with prayer because I believe that you command your day before God gets the first tithe of the day. Mm -hmm. Really commanding my day, getting my mindset proper, shifting. And I'm still that paper person planning, you know, what am I going to do? You know, something tangible I can look at and I can have some um, check off. And also just, just following up and follow through. And I may have a day planned, but as you know, the life of an entrepreneur, you know, things are going to happen. Things are going to get um, interrupted. So in the being in the financial arena, I have certain days now that I do certain things. So some days I may do financial business where I'm dealing with um, writing insurance business or some fixed investments. There may be other days I do project management as well, where I am fully on Zoom all day, you know, managing projects. And then there are other days where I'm doing consult or within within the same day, I'm doing some consultations, et cetera, really helping people start up. One thing I do is business startup and really trying to see what is your vision, et cetera. So visioning, et cetera. So it's really a mix Mm -hmm. and no day is typical, (laughs) Um, but I will say most days are long. There we go. There we go. And so... You know, as an entrepreneur, how do you incorporate self-care into your day or into your week? Uh, one thing that I do is because I'm you know, 100% virtual, sometimes midday I will get out and I'll walk the subdivision because that helps with some mental mm-hmm. clarity. Um, I started meal prepping and sometimes I get you know, sidetracked with that mm-hmm. because it's easy to work, work, work and, and skip meals and then you're exhausted and then your weight fluctuates, et cetera. So mm-hmm. to me, planning in every area of your life, if you meal prep, you can you can know what you're eating. You're not skipping meals, et cetera. Constantly drinking water. And then I have days that I do absolutely nothing. And I set boundaries. Um, there is a certain time where I don't respond to text messages and even emails because I started business by teaching people that I didn't have hours and I would be mm. responding to messages at any time. So to me, a part of self-care is sticking to the boundaries. I think that's huge um, because like you said, a lot of it, you know, if you're virtual, you know, if you're online, then literally people have access to you 24 seven. And it all depends on how you actually respond. So it's yes. very important to kind of set those boundaries. So for you, what would you say to people that are watching? And, you know, it's that entrepreneurial mind versus the employee mindset. Like, what are some of those differences between being an, an, um, an employee versus being an entrepreneur? The I would say the main difference is as an entrepreneur, you have to be self-motivated. There is no one (laughs) typically looking down your to-do list saying, Beverly, did you do this? Erica, did you do this? When are you going to have it done? So if we drop the ball, we have to understand that if we drop the ball, we're dropping a ball on ourselves, or we're dropping a ball on our our income goals. Um, The biggest mindset shift is it's not about a feeling. You're not going to always want to do your business. (laughs) I can attest to it. Sometimes I don't feel like it. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to do it. But if you have a goal or this is how you eat, you know, a man who doesn't work, doesn't eat. This is how you reach that end goal. Then you have to press past emotions and press past feelings and and make it happen. There we go. And so for you, you know, pressing past those feelings, um, what kind of support system do you have in place to kind of help you as the, you know, on your entrepreneurial journey? I have, I believe in coaches. Mm -hmm. I believe in um, so that that's that's one core thing. And you have been an amazing coach. Thank you. <laughs> um, in addition, I have other entrepreneur friends. A lot of them are female friends where you can really bounce ideas off of and you can be transparent when you're getting overwhelmed. Um, the additional support system is learning how to delegate um, virtual assistants. So I have two virtual assistants and I had to learn to trust them with my baby. And so I look at that as a support because why have a support if you're not using your support? <laughs> 
and, and I love everything that you said, you know, um, investing in coaches and mentors. But you also mentioned, you know, being surrounded by other entrepreneurs. And you also said delegation. So yes. how did you learn how to let someone else hold your baby? How did you learn that? Well, I thought about having been in project management. Project management is delegation. And I was able to delegate corporately. But when it came to my baby, I think it was more of past hurt because when you've given somebody, when somebody has dropped your baby, you want to nurture your baby, protect your baby. You're afraid that somebody else will drop your baby. So really just saying, I'm going to delegate. I'm going to trust. And if, it, if something doesn't work, we'll, we'll, we'll train, we'll coach, we'll, we'll sh and, and shift. And so what I learned is once I delegate and if I realize it's not working, I shift quickly. I'm no longer emotionally tied or soul tied to something that's not working in my business and allow my business to fail because of it. And I love that, you know, what you said, making the shifts, you know, being open and OK. Um, let me ask you this, Erica. Has everything been uh, peaches and cream when it comes to you in your business? Like what have been those instances where it just hasn't worked out the way that you thought? And how do you bounce back from those times? Um, definitely not peaches and cream. I would say one of the biggest challenges in my business is I do 501c3 development and I'm not in charge of the 501c3 timeline. Mm -hmm. And so although I have SOPs and I, I list it, you know, once, you know, when I, I give several updates and I'm not in charge of that timeline, people are impatient. Um, if you're doing a 1023, which can take six months and sometimes even longer, I'm the person that you're looking at and you're thinking that I'm holding you up when really once you file, you're it's 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 basically the order. And so the challenge is over communicating. Um, sometimes I've even done conference calls because, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, the trust is there. And so what that has been the biggest the, the things that you cannot control, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can't over communicate. Gotcha. So once again, and kind of knowing it's going to happen, because yes. once again, look, if everybody, you know, everybody's not tapped to be an entrepreneur, right. but knowing like just kind of having that as part of everything will not go as planned. Yes. But kind of planning for that, <laughs> but planning for that thing. And so, Erica, we are definitely going to continue this conversation mm -hmm. right after these messages. Hello, my name is Beverly Wathauer and I am a business strategist. And so today I just want to talk to you about four simple tips that you can implement when it comes to creating more income and more impact in your business. And so this is specifically for those of you that leverage social media in the online space. And so I call these my four C's. And so the very first C that we have is all about the content that you put out. So whether or not that content is on social media, whether or not it's messages that you sent to your email list, your blog, any conversations that you're having with people. So that's anything in which you're speaking to your ideal client. You want to ensure that it is valuable content. It is information in which people are able to make some type of shift or they're able to learn something about you or learn something about themselves. So having that quality content is very important. Next, you also want to ensure that you are making quality connections. And so when it comes to connections, this is really and truly you building relationships relationships with your ideal client. And once again, on social media, for instance, the way that that can look. So whether or not it's you, um, you know, maybe commenting on someone's content that they put out there, whether or not it's you sparking up a conversation with them, you know, those are things where you're actually connecting with people. And so from that connection that you make, um, what you want to do is then shift into conversations. And so with those conversations, you are gearing that specifically to find out one of three things. You're uh, having those conversations to see whether or not that person might be a potential client, whether or not they might be a potential collaboration. So you and that person may be, be able to get together and actually do something together, or it might be a potential connection, which just means that, you know, your services or product may not be a good fit for them, but you know of someone 
someone that you can actually connect them with in which their services are a better fit. And so as you are having those conversations with them, those people in which they are a potential client, then what you want to do is to convert them into a uh, potential, you know, actually do a conversion. So that means actually converting them into a paying client. So they're going from a potential client into a paying client. And so that conversion can take place via social media in Messenger. So you hear people say it goes down in the DMs. So actually being able to close uh, clients and uh, close clients in Messenger, or it may actually take you sending them a link and they go to that link to make the purchase. Or it could be where you actually get on a sales call with them, have a conversation with them where you're digging into more of what it is that they need, what their problems are, what it is that they actually desire. And then if you have that solution, actually offering that solution to them. And so actually making the offer and then that is when they become that paying client. So once again, this was just a quick tip to help you to be able to create more income and more impact in your business. Until next time. Hello and welcome back to Talking Business with Beverly. And so before the break, we were speaking with Erica, you know, just about her process when it comes to entrepreneurship. So Erica, talk to me a little bit more about, you know, when it came to you deciding that, hey, this is what I want to do um, when it comes to entrepreneurship. What were some things that you kind of put in place to help you to make that dive into entrepreneurship? I began to look at what associations are um, good to be a part of in my field. I began to look at what certifications, what's going to set me apart from the next person. Mm -hmm. So doing consulting, I, I got a um, PMP, a project management certification, six Sigma certification. So even if I was doing business to business contracts, what are some things that they're looking for out the gate that can help me monetize my business mm -hmm. even further? Because I didn't want to just work hard. I wanted to work smarter. And I want it to be what is going to separate me from the next consultant or the next person. I love that. And so how do you leverage social media in your business? I make sure that um, my posts are intentional. I post often mm -hmm. and I make sure that my posts you know, are intentional so that people know who I am and people know what it is that I do and I offer. And um, it's just basically staying active because what I realized, but I realized it probably later is that Someone, if you posted two weeks ago, it doesn't mean everyone saw that post, you know, about, you know, the services or products mm -hmm. that you offer. So I'm um, remaining visible. And um, also just if it, it following up, if someone, you know, comments on a post and they show interest, reach out because the fortune is still in the follow up. There we go. And so, um, you know, when it comes to the, the social media and relationship building, how do you build relationships? Especially once again, you're talking about money. Okay. So that's a little bit sensitive. How do you specifically build relationships online? A lot of times, um, sometimes people will, if someone is um, consistently engaging with me, I may reach out and, and tell them I'm here to serve. You know, I see that you have a business or this is things I'm here to serve, but it's not a sale. Mm -hmm. It is basically, you know, hearing their heart, you know, and hearing, you know, where they are. And sometimes I may do a, a Zoom, you know, or do a phone call and then we can talk. And it may not always be about business, but just sharing this division I have, et cetera. And then beginning to build relationships or even referring, you know, just even being able to say, I don't have the resources. This is not what I can do. But sometimes being able to, I can refer you to such and such, or I know a person that you may be able to benefit from coaching with or et cetera. So it's not just about me, but seeing if it's something I can help them with offering that assistance or that referral. I love that. And so for you, um, how, what makes what you do different from someone that may do something similar? I think for me, what makes it different is, um, it's ministry for me. So when I think about financial services, I'm not just writing this policy. I am doing the death claim and I am ministering to the family. Um, I, for me, it is, I'm marrying the practical with the spiritual. I am, you know, I am giving you that, that practical knowledge. Mm -hmm. The other portion is, um, I believe anybody can file a business. It's easy to file and incorporate. But my thing is you're in business now what? I'm the now what part, because it doesn't matter if you have an LLC at Inc or whatever, if you don't know what to do next. 
And so what I do is make sure in this industry, what licenses do you need now? You know, are you in compliance? Are you going to register, you know, every year? And so my, my thing is that now what and now how do you grow it? And I don't do everything, mm -hmm. but I can connect you to the people who do. I love that. And so, you know, first of all, knowing you and, and kind of like being that connector piece to them, like you said, if I don't know it and not coming from a, a place of lack, you're like, hey, thinking, well, if I send them off to somebody else, I'm not going to make the money. But knowing that if you refer them out, it's going to come back to you, period. <laughs> yes. And so, Erica, what do you say to that person that's watching in their contemplating starting their own business, but they're not sure about where to start or how to start. What would you say? I would say do it afraid. And I would say um, don't be afraid to ask for help because sometimes we don't know what we um, don't know. And, and um, invest in, it's an investment in yourself. And it's better to try and fail. And you will have some failures fell forward. There'll be some things. Everything won't be perfect. Um, then to not try and wonder what if I would have did this, et cetera. I would say find out whatever state you're in, you know, what those filing fees are for your particular entity. Consult with someone like a Beverly or some other people on what it would take and ask questions. Find out who is the best at their game in that particular thing that you want to do and do the research and do the homework and get started and just start where you are. There we go. And so Erica, what are two things you love the most about being an entrepreneur? I determine my earning potential. Yes. That, that, that would be the, um, that would be the, um, one of the number one things. And the number two things is that I help create other entrepreneurs. So I help people tap, live out scripture tap into their ability to get well, monetize their gifts, etc. I love that. I love that. And Erica, believe it or not, we are out of time. So please share with our viewers uh, what they can do to remain connected with you. So what's your website, your social media, and your email address? Awesome. You can find me on Facebook at I Know My Value. Again, I Know My Value. My email address is Erica at I Know My Value dot com. It's E R I C A. And the website is www.inomyvalue.com. Awesome. Erica, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and I also want to thank you, the viewers, for joining us as well. And remember, as entrepreneurs, we must address our business, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial needs as well if we want to create the time and financial freedom that we desire. Until next time, take care.